Your satellite is now completed, but you want to make sure before you send your multi-million dollar satellite on a multi-million dollar mission into space that everything is working properly. So there are a number of standard types of tests that you have to do to make sure that everything is going to work as you intend once it reaches the environment of space. So first of all, you want to make sure that everything works on the ground. This is an example of the solar arrays being deployed for the InSight mission. And any kind of mission that you have, you will want to do some kind of a test of all of the major mechanical systems. You want to make sure the antennas can deploy. You want to make sure the solar panels can deploy. Any instruments that, that are deployed, well, you want to make sure they work. You want to make sure that the fault conditions will all come to, to fruition, that if the satellite it waits for long enough, it'll go into the proper reset modes and all of that. You want to make sure it's working absolutely solidly before you go ahead and launch your spacecraft into space because when it's on the ground, there's still a lot of things you can do to fix it. Once it's on orbit, there's much, much fewer things that you can do and you can't plug anything in or change any parts out. So once everything's working fine, and you might have to adjust, for instance, the InSight mission, they had to make sure that the solar panels could be deployed on the gravity of Mars, and maybe your solar panels are not weighted to... They're weighted for zero gravity, so you have to make sure that they work in in Earth gravity, and you might have to make some allowances to still make sure it works right. But you can still manage to do these kinds of testing. You'll want to test the radiation patterns for the antennas as well, and all of that kind of stuff. Now, the next thing that you'll want to do is test things in a vacuum chamber, because space is a vacuum. So this is an example of a satellite being from NASA being placed into a vacuum chamber, the, that big, huge uh, cone that you see in there. And what they'll do is they'll put it in there and they'll suck out all of the air. And then they can control the temperature in there so they can you know, make it brighter so that way it can, can see the, the effects of high heat when you're in a vacuum. And they can also make it colder and you can make sure that the satellite is thermally stable. There have been instances I'm aware of where you stick it in the vacuum chamber and you find out that the heat sink for some parts that need high heat are not adequate and you might have to fix those. Next thing is, is you want to make sure that it can survive the launch environment. So that is done by a vibration test and this is another NASA mission being tested at Goddard Space Center. For any mission that is being tested, the, the vibration makes sure that it can survive the rocket. And so there'll be some kind of a noise profile that the rocket will show that when it's being launched, it will vibrate at certain frequencies. You want to make sure that everything on your spacecraft can survive that, and you'll test this. And even the most basic satellites have to undergo vibration testing. CubeSats have to undergo vibration testing. I'm pretty certain that Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster underwent vibration testing to make sure that nothing was going to break off when it was being launched into space, and they probably had to make some adjustments for that. The last kind of testing you would do is an EMI testing. Now, this is a special environment where this is a big metal box that blocks out all of the radio frequencies from the outside. And in there, you can test it to make sure that the spacecraft isn't receiving noise from itself, so you can make sure these sensitive receivers are working exactly as you intend them to. And you'll want to test this for every spacecraft, and maybe you'll find that there's some issues, that uh, some connectors that are leaking out a little bit of RF energy that you can cover them, or some other means to help protect your, your sensitive receivers. This is especially important if you have a communication satellite. This is less important for something that you only have one-way communication. So a, a student CubeSat might not go through an EMI testing, but they almost they will absolutely go through a vibration testing, and they'll probably go through some kind of a thermal vacuum testing as well, in addition to whatever kind of integration testing they have. Anyways, thank you much for joining me on this journey. Let me know whatever questions or comments you have. And until next time, keep on tracking. This is Ben Pearson, the Roadster Tracker.